Starting in 1977, Burger King partnered with Topps to get baseball cards into their restaurants. This wasn't the first time that baseball cards were used to promote a crappy food product. Grab your napkin. This is a whopper of a story. In the mid-70s, McDonald's was experimenting with a kid's meal that came with a prize, what would become known as the Happy Meal. Burger King caught wind and so tried a little prize action of its own, and in 1977 partnered with Topps to give away baseball cards with the purchase of a burger. If you recall, Cracker Jack tried a similar trick in 1914 and 1915, and that turned out pretty well for baseball card collectors. Burger King began small, issuing just a single team set of the Yankees in 1977 in New York area restaurants. The cards came in packs of three with any burger, 23 cards in all, plus a checklist. They were nearly identical to the standard 1977 top set, but not completely. A number of the cards had updated photos. You might call them the first short print image variations. And that included Reggie Jackson, who had a badly airbrushed photo in the 77 flagship set, but Burger King had issued him in the proper pinstripes. Also, Lou Pinella was not originally in the set, and George Steinbrenner flipped his lid when he found out and pressured Burger King to fix it. So they hastily printed some Pinellas, but there are far fewer of them from 77 than the rest of the set. And Pinella isn't even on the checklist. That's an SSP right there, as the kids would say. In addition to the Pinella, Thurman Munson and Catfish Hunter were also popular cards from the set. Some of the cards, like Jim Wynn, function as a sort of traded card, because since they were issued during the season, they could include team changes. Keep this in mind as we go forward. So Burger King had a minor success on its hands. Giving out a few pennies worth of baseball cards got a lot of kids to pester their parents to take them to Burger King for dinner. Not only did the kids get baseball cards, but 40 years later, they all had type 2 diabetes as well. A win-win for America. In 1978, Burger King expanded the program to four markets and issued restaurant-only team sets of the Yankees, Tigers, Rangers, and Astros. Again, the cards were mostly identical, except for the differing card numbers and a handful of image variations. Notable 1978 Hall of Famers with image variations include Fergie Jenkins, Jack Morris, and Alan Trammell. The Trammell is a particular gem, as the 78 flagship set rookie card was a foreign one that also featured Paul Molitor. But Trammell got his own card in the Burger King set, and this not-a-rookie rookie card sells for way more than the foreign one rookie card does from the flagship set. For 1979, Burger King dropped the Detroit, Dallas, and Houston markets, but kept the New York market alive with another set of Yankees cards, and a new set of Phillies cards exclusively for the Philadelphia market. With the New York and Philadelphia markets so close, Burger King could save on distribution costs. The Yankees set from 79 has four image variations, but also pesky card number 16, Fred Stanley. Fred Stanley is card number 16 in the flagship set, and card number 16 in the Burger King set. Eagle eyes are needed to spot the differences, which include a slightly different crop to the photo, and generally, but not always, more color saturation in the Burger King printing. You might also notice that the card number for the Burger King card has a slightly thicker font. The Philly set from 79 is mostly a repeat of the flagship cards, but there are a few bonuses in there too. Manager Danny Ozark, Mamie Trio, Greg Gross and Doug Bird all have image variations in their new Phillies uniforms. Pete McCannon didn't have a card in the flagship set at all, so this is his lone Phillies card. He would go on to serve as the Phillies bench coach, third base coach, interim manager, and manager. So this is a fun one. But the big card of 1979 is without doubt Pete Rose. He's still in a Reds uniform for the flagship set, but he had signed the biggest contract in baseball history at the time to come to the Phillies in 79. Looking back on his Reds career, it's crazy to think that he had already surpassed 3,000 hits before he joined the Phillies. This card sits at about $8 on its own, but high-grade examples are well into the hundreds. The all-time record sale for the 79 Burger King Pete Rose was $2,061.08 for a PSA 10 
which sold back in 2012. The card has a total pop of 298, but only 5 PSA 10s. In 1980, Burger King shifted their marketing efforts again, this time going national with the pitch, hit, and run set, which saw nationwide distribution. This 22 card set was mostly the stars of the day, including Steve Carlton, Nolan Ryan, and Reggie Jackson and the like. But Burger King went much heavier on the branding, slapping their logo on the front of the cards that were otherwise 1980 flagship designs. The backs were red instead of the flagship green. And I don't know about you, but the Burger King logo on the front really kills the collecting buzz for me. What began as a new, cool avenue for collectors ends where it always does in corporate America, with some stupid logo pasted over that which was once attractive. This is happening right now in baseball, with the uniforms. But that's another video. In addition to the pitch, hit, and run set, Burger King retained one regional release as well, in Philadelphia. No more Yankees cards. The Phillies got their own Burger King release in 1980 particularly prescient in that the Phillies won the World Series that year. The cards were largely identical to the flagship set, but on the back, the Burger King logo appeared to help differentiate them. Lonnie Smith got a card in this set alone. He doesn't appear in the flagship set at all. Smith was a young rookie who broke through in 1980. He was a prolific base stealer and a big contributor to the World Series team. He was third place in the Rookie of the Year voting in 1980. So that's a cool card to have in the team set. Thank you very much, Burger King. Also, John Vukovic, known in Philly circles as just Vuk, who was a longtime coach for the team too. He's a Burger King exclusive also. And there's more. Kevin Saucier, Keith Moreland, and manager Dallas Green all got cards in the Burger King set, but not the flagship set. That's five extra cards for a World Series winning team. A very cool way to extend the team set. 1981 changed everything as Topps lost their exclusive rights to produce cards and Fleer and Donruss exploded into the market, flooding collections with junky, junky wax. In response, Burger King backed off baseball and leaned into Star Wars cards instead. Additionally, they had to start giving away full-on toys to compete with the ever more popular Happy Meal taking over America. They limped out two regional sets for the Braves and Indians in 1982. The Indian set was only 12 cards and barely qualified as baseball cards in any case. It was clear that the fast food baseball card experiment had sat under the heat lamp for too long. And that's a real shame, because for a while there, Burger King of all businesses were producing unique baseball cards that were real additions to the flagship sets. And all these years later, the Burger King cards sit happily in collections of so many, myself included. Thanks for watching. Burger King used to be your local card store. We'll see you next time on Baseball Card Stories, Legends, and Lore.